Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say good morning. I hope you all have had some coffee. I'm finishing up some of mine right now. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and uh, get started in about four more minutes. So feel free to relax, grab something to drink or a little snack, and um, just hang tight. And I know um, a few of you who have been on uh, some of the Zoom calls before know that there's a Zoom group chat function. So if you want to chat privately or just to me, feel free to use that option during the presentation. So while we're um, waiting on just a few more people to join, I'd love for you guys to put in the chat function um, if you've ever used a file sharing or a storage tool. So some of those would include like Dropbox, Box, Google Drive, Share File, different things like that. So pop in the chat, just taking a quick poll on, on who all's used that. All right, Melissa said yes. And which one have you used, Melissa, if you want to pop that in there too? All right, so she's used Dropbox. Rob said that he's using Google Drive and OneDrive. That's another good one, OneDrive. Okay, we have a couple of people who have not used a file sharing device. Okay, Sterling's used Google Drive. I will say I'm a big Google Drive user myself. If any of you guys were at the Google Suite class, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of Google Drive. <laughs> Candy said she's used Dropbox, but only once. So that's good. We'll definitely do um, a refresher on how to use Dropbox. Brianna has said that she's tried to use them, but have to relearn each time Google and Dropbox, okay? Awesome. Okay, Google Drive and OneDrive, awesome. Very cool. Thanks for participating in that quick little poll. And it is 10 a.m. So I'm going to uh, minimize the chat. If you guys do have questions throughout the class, feel free to chat it to me and I'll um, try to answer as quickly as possible. Um, but today we are going to be talking in our Doing Business Remotely series. It's the fourth one uh, today. So it's all about storage and file sharing tools. So I'm really excited for this one. I think it'll help you guys tremendously because I know if you're like me, I love to take photos. I have a lot of documents and it's very important to just keep yourself quite organized, especially as a small business owner or just in general. So I always like to just start off by introducing my team. So I'm the one um, down here on the, um, on the left and I have the snakeskin <laughs> shirt on. And um, it's very nice to meet all of you. This is my fantastic tabletop media group team. My name is Kristen. I know that um, the webinar today says Stacy. So Stacy is part of the Warren County Economic Development Office. He's the director here. So he's letting us use his uh, paid Zoom account, which I'm really happy about. 
And then um, also Sherry, who I think should be hopping on soon if she's on already, she is part of the Vance Granville Community College Small Business Center. And so the three of us put our heads together and started this Doing Business Remotely series. So I'm really excited that Tabletop Media Group can be a part of it. But again, my name is Kristen and I'm super happy to be your instructor today. And I do have all of our contact information up and feel free to jot it down if you'd like. Otherwise, it will be popping up at the end of the session as well. And this is being recorded and you'll also uh, get a copy of the recording and all of my slides. So you're welcome to refer back to that if you have any other questions. So today's topic, as I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about all things storage and file sharing. So we're gonna go over five things today. Number one, what's the purpose of all of this? Number two, we'll talk about uh, one of the tools called Box, then Share File, Google Drive, and Dropbox. I know a few of you mentioned OneDrive as another tool. Um, that's also a really another um, great popular tool out there that you can use. So we'll talk about just a, a couple more um, that maybe you can look into if you're interested. So what's the purpose of these file sharing and storage tools? Well, number one, my favorite is that there are no restrictions. So working online means that we often have files that we might wanna share with teammates or maybe even our clients. I know I'm constantly sharing um, you know, documents with my clients or I might need them to sign something. And so while emailing attachments is still very popular to share files, sometimes maybe my photos or my PDF or whatnot just might be a little too big and it bogs down um, my email system or it just won't send. So the, um, the file storage and sharing devices has basically no restrictions on file size. So you can really use these to send and be quite um, more productive um, when you're doing business. So number two is collaboration. So some of these tools allow for multiple people to work on the same file all at once. And so we'll go into that, especially on um, Box, Google Drive and Dropbox. So I'll give you examples of how you can actually collaborate on files. And then the most important is that these are all cloud-based. So it saves you from the setup, cost, and maintenance of running your own home server, which I know many of us probably don't even have anymore because a lot of things have transitioned into the cloud, which is the internet. So it makes it really easy to upload files to share with your colleagues. You have access remotely on any device and you can also store things for later. So I will say that I picked um, different tools that all have mobile apps. So I know I use my phone and Google Drive all the time. I even have Dropbox installed on my phone. So I, I would say just test these all out, whatever works for you, your budget, your business, and just see which one is the best fit for you. For me personally, I love Google Drive. I've just found that that works for my brain, but then I have some friends that love Box or some that love Dropbox. So really find what works best for you and just know that you can use your desktop and you can also use your laptop and your phone, your tablet, whatnot to access all of them. So number two, we're gonna go over Box. So this is gonna be our very first file sharing and storage platform that we'll take a look at. So I'm gonna share my computer audio. Anywhere, anytime, on any device. That's the way we work. And when teams are trying to work together on a presentation or get contracts reviewed and signed remotely, they need tools that work with them, not against them. That's what Box is all about. Secure, effortless collaboration from any device. Box centralizes content online in easy to organize workspaces and empowers users to control their own content so they can securely share large files or folders in seconds, even with people outside their company. With Box, finding files couldn't be easier. Thanks to advanced search with metadata, files never get lost in the shuffle. From viewing to advanced editing, Box is a breeze. Open just about any type of file, make changes, and save edits all without downloading the file. Or work together on an Office file in real time without ever leaving Box. Plus, keep the conversation out of email and with the content where it belongs. 
Box provides a central place to capture feedback and automate approval workflows. And if anyone needs to revert back to a previous version, it's only a click away. With today's cybersecurity risks, protecting information is a priority. On Box, encryption keeps content secure, while centralized controls and reporting make it easy for IT to manage. Plus, there's no need to worry about lost or stolen mobile devices. Remote logout and data deletion is quick and easy with our powerful mobile security capabilities. In fact, our pre-built integrations with leading productivity and security tools, along with a comprehensive compliance program, make it really simple for IT to keep employees happy and business secure. With Box, companies of all sizes across industries have a new way of working faster and smarter. Be more collaborative, more connected, more secure. Box, the modern content management platform. Okay, so I just wanted to share that, that quick um, video with you guys all about Box. So I hope that was helpful just as a quick introduction about what Box is. So we'll move along. So Box, we're gonna talk about four interesting functions today. So number one is the fact that it integrates with quite a few other platforms that you might already be using. So I'll pull up an example from my Box account, but basically what that means is that you can easily send files um, from your Box account. So say maybe you have a PowerPoint presentation that you wanna share. Well, you can easily click the Gmail integration and you can share that PowerPoint on your Gmail account, or maybe you want to use Outlook. Um, there's some other things that it also integrates with. DocuSign is a really popular one. I don't know how many of you have ever used DocuSign. I use it a lot um, whenever I need to send contracts to people to sign. But basically, DocuSign allows you to sign a PDF document, and it allows you to put where your client or you know your colleague needs to sign a document. And so Box integrates with that platform as well. Then there's Slack, which we're actually going to talk about in a future session. And then Workfront Proof, it's similar to what we talked about last class on Tuesday. It's more of a project management um, system. So I'm going to slide over to my Box screen. Okay, so now we have um, Box open. So this is what Box is going to look like as soon as you, um, you open up your Box account. And I signed up pretty recently to Box. I've had a couple of clients that have shared stuff with me. Um, you'll, you'll actually see this um, under all files. These that have like the globe right here, these are shared files. So you'll see three different files that I have that have been shared and it will say who shared me on it. And then I have my own examples in here. So I'm just gonna click on, I created a folder called VGCC examples. So I'm gonna click on this. So I wanna show you how something integrates uh, with the different platforms. So when I click on, I'm gonna uh, open up this uh, photo of a hat that my photographer took. So say I wanted to send this image as an email. I will just click over here and these are every single type of um, integration that Box has. So you can see Gmail, there's DocuSign, Outlook, another email system, Slack, um, and then there's more apps if you click this dot dot, and there's other uh, recommended apps for Box that you can add in. So let's say I wanted to send this with my Gmail account, I would simply click this button, and um, it gives you an alert that you have to add this um, integration. So you click add, and then next, and um, it'll ask me if I want to send it. I just hit OK, and it will automatically open up my uh, email, my Gmail. So it opens up this window, and then I can send it to my colleague, Quinn, if I wanted to, and then simply just hit send. And so it adds it as a link right here. And so whenever Quinn gets this link, she'll be able to open it and immediately open up that image of that hat. So it makes it really simple. I love the Gmail integration. Um, also the Outlook integration is pretty great. All right. So number two, one of the other interesting functions of Box. So Box allows you to easily assign tasks, which I think is really great for a business. So Box allows you to assign the following. Number one is just general tasks. So assignees are responsible for marking their task as completed. 
So if, say, for example, you wanted to ask Kristen, Kristen, please add your edits to the document. So as soon as I add my edits to whatever document is in box, I can simply check it. And then I know that now that general task is complete. Then there's also um, just a more yes or no type of task. It's called an approval task. So assignees are responsible for approving or rejecting tasks. So maybe um, one of the tasks that I'm adding to one of my colleagues is, does this document look good to send to our client? So they can say yes or no. No meaning that they are rejecting it. Yes meaning that they're approving it. So I'm gonna show you a, a quick example of how you can assign task on Box. So we're gonna pop back over to this hat photo that I um, just was sharing you guys on. So if I wanna add a task, I simply open up my file. So we have the hat photo opened up and I click this button up here, it says add task. So these are the two different types that we were talking about. So a general task, so I'm gonna click on this. I'm going to assign um, Quinn from my team. So I start typing her name and since we're already connected on box, it'll automatically populate her name. But say I just want to um, assign it to somebody else on my team who's not a box user, I would just put in their email address. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I lied. You actually do have to be connected on Box. Sorry about that, I'm getting them confused with Dropbox. So you will have to make sure that you are connected on Box. So we're gonna assign uh, Quinn to this task and then I'm going to write um, a message to her. Please review this image um, and add in your feedback. And then I can select the due date. So I can you know, select it for a month out if I wanted. So May 8th is when it's gonna be due. And I just hit create. And so then what that does it, it, is that it alerts Quinn that she has a task that she needs to do. And it'll say that it's in progress, what due date, and then my message to her. But maybe I just want it to be a quick approval task. So that's when I go to add task, approval task, and I type in Quinn's name. And then I say, um, is this good to send to our client? And then I can select it's due tomorrow, create. And then what happens is she'll have to either just say yes or no. So it's pretty simple. And that's how you create those two different types of tasks. And then if she were to look in um, her box account on the back end for the approval task, she'll just have a, a simple button that says approve or reject. So it's pretty simple to use. I definitely like that it's quite collaborative for your team. So number three, an interesting thing about Box is that it allows you to easily chat back and forth with your team. So you'll open your document, your image, whatever you might have that you need to collaborate on, and then you'll select the activity button. Then once the activity button is selected, you can write a comment and tag your teammate that needs to view the comment. So I'm gonna go back into our box account and um, show you guys how that works from scratch. So we'll uh, click on this Google Doc that I need um, for somebody to comment back and forth with me on. So I'm going to open up this Google Doc. It's a blank document right now, but I need to ask somebody a question. So I click right here to this little chat button that says activity and it will expand it. And then I go down to the bottom, write a comment. So say if I need to mention a user on Box, so one of my teammates, I'm gonna mention Quinn, I type the at symbol and then I type her name. And it will um, pop up, I will select her name and then I'll ask her, hey, what do you think of this document? And then I can post it and it will immediately post it into my activity section. And so now Quinn will know that she has a chat and then she can chat back and forth with me directly on this document. So it makes it really helpful in order to get feedback on a document. And also it helps to keep things out of your email inbox, which I know I personally love. So somebody can just ask you a general question on a document right there without sending you an email about it. So I think that is a really helpful tool. Number four is that Box has a notes section. So Box allows you to have notes on your Box account. So I'm gonna pop back over to my Box account and you'll see that there's a section on the far left called Notes. So I'm going to click on this. So Notes, uh, what you'll do in order to create one is select the New button. And so it will pop open a new note 
and you can select just a blank note or you can select a new note from a template. So Box already has some really great templates built in. So for instance, one that I like to use is a meeting agenda. So uh, you can select one of those templates. It'll help you build like a new document out um, is what I like to kind of consider it as. So here's what the box notes looks like. This is how it's gonna look when you first open it up. Right now, you can see I have three different notes. So I have one, it's a meeting agenda example that I pulled, this is a box template. So I can easily go in here, I can say uh, tabletop team agenda. I can rename it, I can edit right in the document. I can make things bigger, I can make things bold, italicize, underline, it's all the similar functions as like Google Doc or Microsoft Office that you're familiar using. I can add in a table if I wanted to, bullets, all sorts of different things. And then it automatically will save this, which is really great. So if I wanted to create one of these new notes, I would go up here and click new and it would just open up a blank one or I can click this arrow button that says note from a template. So I just wanted to show you guys this. You can choose a blank note, a meeting agenda, calendar, newsletter, project status, project plan. So I'm just gonna open up project plan and then hit create. So Box will automatically create this new note for me and it's a project plan. So this is really great that it's already built in. Now I can go in and provide my edits. So you're essentially um, allowed to use Box to store new notes and also collaborate with your team. So say I wanted to share this project plan with my colleague Quinn, I can invite her to now edit it. So it's similar to Google Docs for those of you who use Google Docs. So I'm inviting Quinn and then she can easily pop on and create edits at the same time. Whenever a collaborator is on your box note, you'll see their initials that pop up. So right now I'm currently on this line, you'll see my green initials as a circle that says KB. But if I move down to out of scope, you'll see KB again highlighted and it will be wherever my cursor is. So it's pretty neat. So if Quinn were to pop on, we would see her initials wherever her cursor is. And then we can both edit in real time. So it's really fun if you're working on maybe like a project proposal or editing. Um, for us, we write a lot of press releases. So maybe we need to both be on there to edit it. It's really great. And you can also invite your clients to it, people that are outside of your organization. And then um, if you wanted to share this just as a link, you can click share and get link. And um, you can pick who can actually edit this and who can, um, can view this. So say I want everybody to just be able to view it instead of edit. Maybe I'm sending it to a client and I don't want them to edit the document. I can just simply toggle over and say can view. And then I just copy this link and then I can easily go back into my email inbox, send them that link, and then this note will now pop up for them. So it's a really great tool. Uh, definitely something that I think is pretty neat that Box has integrated with their program. So I know um, price is always something that I like to talk about just because I know I'm price conscious as a small business and most of you guys are too. So Box is pretty affordable. Um, the personal account is totally for free and it offers you 10 gigabytes of free storage space. But whenever you're uploading a file, so the max file size of each upload is 250 megabytes. Then the second tier account is the starter account. And this account is $5 a month per user. So say for instance, uh, the tabletop team is on box and say we have 10 people, then it would be $50 a month for my business to use that. But um, per user, you get 100, and, uh, 100 gigabytes of storage space, and then the max file size per upload is two gigabytes. So you'll see that it is now significantly increased uh, when you upgrade to that starter plan. Then for the business plan, it's $15 a month per user, but it gives you unlimited storage space, which is huge for a business, and then also a max file size of five gigabytes that you can upload. So I know um, one of our videographers likes to use file storage to upload a lot of videos. And so this might be the perfect example of something that he would use because videos are such large file sizes. 
So now number three, the next um, file storage and sharing tool that we'll go over is share file. And I'm going to briefly cover this one because I do get a lot of questions about it. Like, is it something that my business should consider? And so we'll talk about some of like the pros and cons I, I think of ShareFile. So ShareFile is brought to you by Citrix. So they actually acquired ShareFile, I believe it was back in like 2014 or so. Um, and this is a custom file sharing site for your business. So you can easily share files with your clients, with teammates, with partners, and many other people. ShareFile is known for being very, very secure. So whenever you're sending a file or sharing a file, you can choose this button that says encrypt files when you're sharing and sending. So I think if you're a business that perhaps you're um, in the healthcare field, maybe you're an attorney or you're sending tax documents, you're a CPA, I think ShareFile is really great for folks um, in those types of fields. Uh, fields where, you know, you're sending files, you need to, you know, maybe have a social security number on it or like a health record or, you know, your EIN or things like that, that um, maybe you don't want um, to have floating out there on the internet. You want them encrypted when you're sharing them. So I would say ShareFile is really great for this. And then ShareFile, ShareFile also has some other tools for business users. So for instance, they have e-signatures built in. So I know we were talking about earlier how Box has DocuSign. Um, so it's similar, but it's um, ShareFile's own integration. So it has an e-signature. Maybe you need a client to sign a contract. You can easily pop that over using ShareFile. Then ShareFile does also have a couple integrations. So it integrates really well with Outlook if you use that for your email server. Also integrates well with Gmail. And then you can also do document collaboration, similar to what we were just talking about, how Box has the notes section, or similar to like a Google Docs, you can collaborate at the same time with your other colleagues from your business. So this is a quick video about ShareFile. I just want you guys to take a look at ShareFile, uh, what it looks like, and we're not gonna cover too much on ShareFile because you will see it is a little bit more expensive, um, but I do want you guys to get a feel of what it looks like and how to use it. And let me uh, share my computer audio really quick. In this video, we'll demonstrate sharing a file, whether it's already uploaded to your account or stored on your computer. Then we'll discuss the various ways that you can send it. After all, we have a company name to live up to. If you're an employee user with the Filebox permission, you can start the share process right from your dashboard. There are a few different ways that you can share files. For this video, we'll stick with email and get a link. Let's say you went with email with ShareFile. We'll start with the basics. You can enter your recipients manually or via your address book. Your recipient doesn't have to be a ShareFile user on your account. You can just enter their email address here if necessary. You can modify message options to customize some important details. You can choose to receive a copy of the message or be notified when the file has been accessed. Security settings let you control who can access your file and how. If you have the encrypted email feature, you can encrypt this message the same way you would an email from the ShareFile plugin for Microsoft Outlook. If your account has file versioning enabled, you can choose to always link to the most recent version of a file. If you forget to add extra files to the message, use the Add More button to add files stored on your account or your computer. When you're all done, send it away. If you're sending a file that's currently stored on your computer, you'll need to give it a second to upload to your file box. The file box is a temporary storage location for files that are stored on your computer. Keep in mind that employee users must have been granted permission to use the file box feature. Consequently, users without the file box permission must upload the file to their account before trying to share it. Let's say that you're short on time and decided to go with the get a link option instead. Here, you can add more files if necessary. And edit various link options. It's always a good idea to check when the link will expire. Your link will be generated at the top. When you're ready, copy and paste that link wherever you need. 
If you need to share multiple files, you can use these checkboxes to select them and then choose the share option in the context menu. If you need to resend your file, adjust the message settings, or expire the link so your recipient can no longer access it, you can do all of that from the sent messages section of your account. That's just two ways that you can share files. For more options, check out the knowledge base at the URL shown here. All right, so that's just a quick look into uh, share file. And I will say one thing I really love, and I know we just talked about it, was the encryption aspect. And then a second thing that I really like about ShareFile is that you don't have to be a user of ShareFile um, like whenever you're sending things. So you could send somebody that's on your ShareFile account a document. You can also you know, maybe add in a client's email address who's not a ShareFile user. So that's something that's kind of cool about it as well. So we'll talk about pricing. Um, ShareFile, you'll see, is a bit more expensive than some of the other uh, platforms that are out there for sharing and storing files. So ShareFile pricing, just keep in mind that this rate is at five employees as users on the account. So um, the first one is the standard account. This is $50 a month, and it gives you all the basic tools to get your small shop started. And then the advanced plan is $77 a month, it offers full file sharing functionality and storage for your growing business. And then the premium account, a bit more expensive, 122 a month, has comprehensive file sharing for highly collaborative teams. And I, I know those are kind of vague um, because there are a lot of different bells and whistles that each plan covers. And I included a link right here and we'll uh, pop this open so you can see. But if you'll um, click on this kind of on your own time, maybe after the presentation, or if you're super interested, you can go in here and look. So it will actually, up under each uh, pricing, it'll tell you what all the plans include. So you'll see all the different check marks um, and what they don't include. So I think that that's uh, a really helpful link for you guys to take a look at. And then um, you do have the option to try ShareFile for free. So they have um, a demo that you can do. So if you click uh, try share file for free, it will give you an option to try it for 30 days. So I always say try it before you buy it, hands down. And a lot of these tools that we're talking about, you do get the opportunity to have a free account or just a free trial. So definitely do that before you decide to dive in and commit yourself to paying, you know, $50 a month or whatever it might be. And um, since it is brought to you by Citrix, um, you'll notice their uh, company branding on here as well. So um, did want to just make you guys aware of that. If you click buy now, it will walk you through um, the different plans and pricing. And if you click buy now, then it will um, have you insert that credit card information and give you immediate access. So it's a pretty simple process in order to get started. And I know uh, we did have a quick question that popped up in our chat. So uh, Brianna is saying, so you can move documents between platforms. So if you can let me know exactly what you mean by platforms, that would be awesome, Brianna. Um, so basically, if you do have like a, say for instance, a Word document on your share file account or on your Box account, you can essentially um, use Box to send that large document and then, um, and have that pop open in somebody's email inbox. And so she's saying using a Google Doc and a Box account. So yes, since Box is integrated, and we'll pop back over here, Box is integrated with Google Docs. So you can um, add in your Google Docs in here into your Box account, and then you can simply click open this file in Google Docs. So if you wanted to edit uh, files, you hit OK, and it will immediately, since it's integrated, pop open your Google Docs. You can, um, you can store them there. I don't think the integration is as great as something like Google Drive, if you're going to use Google Drive as your file sharing and storage uh, tool. So th that's just kind of what that integration looks like. Um, but if you wanted to add in um, a new Google Doc, you would click Upload um, File. And then you can choose to upload, uh, you know, just like a regular document if you wanted to, or you can also um, integrate that Google Drive setting and you can upload Google Docs, which is pretty cool. So um, we can dive into that in a little bit because I, I definitely want to get through some of these other uh, platforms. 
So Google Drive. So number four is Google Drive. This is my personal favorite one. Um, Google Drive is a system that allows companies to store, access, and share their files over a secure connection. So that is something that's also great is that Google Drive is secure. And then uh, Google Drive offers somewhere um, that you can store spreadsheets, documents, and different files that teams create. And you can store every file your firm needs on here and you can access them anytime on mobile or desktop devices. All you have to do is go to drive.google.com to access your Google Drive. So Melissa's popping in here saying that she loves Google Drive. I think that is quite a consensus uh, with many folks that, that I um, chat with who also own small businesses. So we'll go into Google Drive and then I want you to see what Google Drive looks like. So when I open up my Google Drive, you'll notice I have a ton of different files here. And what I typically do is I organize my Google Drive by a client name. So for us, we work with a lot of different restaurants, hotels, you know, lifestyle brands. So I have it organized by a uh, client name. And so you can click over here, there's a little arrow button and it will toggle down all of your different folders. Mine takes a little bit because I have so many in here, but you can see all the different folders. And then if you want to toggle down again, it will show you folders within that folder and so on. So I think it's um, a really great way to keep things organized. It kind of reminds me of like, you know, just on your PC when you're opening up documents. So I really like how it's laid out. So say I want to access, I have a, a fun folder called client images. So I'm going to click on this and it will pop open some more folders. So I have um, our photography team takes a lot of great photos for our clients. So we keep them all under the client images folder. And then up under this folder, I have all of our different client names. So I'm going to go down to um, Coronado Pizza. So this is one of our clients that's based in Carver, North Carolina. And you can see all the different photo shoots that we've done. So there's one folder called Pizza and Snacks. And I can see who the owner of this folder is. It was Stacy from our, our team. So I'm going to click on this. And now it will show me all the different pizza photos that I have and the snack photos that I have. So all, um, you can have it as a list view, or you can also have it as an image view. So it makes them pop open a little bit more. I especially like using this view when I am um, trying to like pick a photo that I wanna send to somebody. So let's say now I have this beautiful photo right here and I want to send it to somebody. So I can simply click the um, three dots in the top and I can say share. And so Google will integrate your address book. And so I can type in somebody's name. So say I want to send it to Jordan from my team. It'll pop open her name and then I can hit send and it will easily share this with her. And so I have different settings on here that say anyone with a link can view, but you can also expand it and you can say, you know, just anybody at my company, Tabletop Media Group can view it or uh, maybe you want it public on the web that anybody on the web can find it if they have access to that link. So be sure to select um, what type of sharing level you want before you hit send. And then something else that's great, kind of like box and share file, is you can actually just generate a link if you wanna share something. And so that link is right here. You simply hit copy link. And then instead of sending it to Jordan, maybe I just wanna pop that link into an email. And so I can say, Jordan, check out this great photo. And then I uh, paste the link. And then once she clicks that link, it'll uh, take her right to this photo. So it's a really simple uh, type of process. And I, I really like the organization of Google Drive. So we will um, also watch a quick video. I know we have a couple more chats, so I'll just, uh, somebody said she really wants pizza. So I agree, Candy, I really want some pizza now too after looking at those. And then Brianna says, does Google Docs work better with Chrome? So uh, Chrome is the internet browser that Google, that, that integrates very well. So I would say for sure it works the best. So I would certainly download Chrome if you don't have it and if you are a Google user. So yes, I would go ahead and download that. So we'll um, share my computer audio again. Meet the new Google Drive. It lets you have all your files within reach from any smartphone, tablet, or computer. And now it's faster and easier to use. First, you'll notice a single button called New, which is where you go to add something to Drive or create something new in Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, or any other Drive-compatible apps. 
You may also notice Drive is now faster, and a single click lets you see file details and recent activity. To open, just double-click the item. After adding more and more files to Drive, you're going to want to organize and share them, so we made that easier too. Now you can use the same commands you use on your computer to select multiple files, and then use the menu or right-click to take group actions. Or simply click and drag to move the files and folders all at once. In the mobile app, you'll see a list of items in your Drive, and you can change views to see thumbnail previews of your files. From this screen, it's easy to search for files or add something from your device to Drive, like photos and videos. And on Android, you can even add other files, like music and downloads. Click the File Info button to enable offline access, see recent file activity, and move or print your file. This is also where you can invite others to files or folders, as well as set what types of access they have. These are just some of the ways we are making Google Drive faster and easier to use, and we're just getting started. Give it a try from any device at g.co slash get drive. All right, and then I did have a chat. Um, Candy is asking, what's the difference between Google Suite and Google Drive? So think of Google Drive as simply where you store your files and where you share them. Google Suite, and we, we did a presentation a few, uh, I think it was last week, on Google Suite. So Google Suite includes everything that Google has to offer. So Google Suite is made up of things like Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Forms, Gmail, all of that. So those are the differences, but that's a, a really great question. So I hope that video was helpful. It gave you um, a nice overview of Google Drive. So I do want to demonstrate how easy it is to share on Google Drive. So I know we, we just went over it kind of briefly, but we'll do a, a deeper dive into this. So um, say you want to create a new document or you want to upload a document to your Google Drive. We'll go ahead and um, just show you guys how easy that is to do. So I'm going to just do a quick example into my main drive. I'm going to hit the button new and then I'll do um, a file upload. So say I have um, an image on my computer that I really want to share with somebody. So I'm going to go down to my photos and this is a beautiful photo of the Lake Gaston sunrise. So I'm going to upload this uh, image into my Google Drive. And so it down on the bottom says my upload is complete. So I will open this up. So that's how, it, how easy it is to upload a file to your Google Drive. And then uh, we're going to show you guys how to share again. So I want to share this document with somebody. So I simply just type the person's name that I wish to share the document with. So again, I'll go to the dots, I'll hit share, and then I just wanna type the person who I wanna share the document with. And just so you know, you can share this with really as many people as you'd like. So say I wanna share it with a bunch of my colleagues. Uh, Google will also suggest people. So for instance, like I like to send um, documents and images to most of my team members all at once. So it's started to suggest my other teammates. So there's Lewis and there's Corey. So Google is really smart. There's Zach and also Carolina. So those are some of my team members that I'm always sending stuff to. So Google starts to recognize that, which I think is really great. Then I can add a personalized note in here. So maybe I can just say testing one, two, three, or I want to say check out this beautiful photo, whatever I want to say, I can put that in there. And so then it's always really important to make sure you click this pencil button. So this is where you can choose for all of these people, if they're able to edit this file, if they can just comment on this file or if they can view this file. So like I mentioned, if you don't want somebody editing your file, make sure that you just select can view. So it's similar to box in that way, where you just want to say can view if you don't want them to be able to edit something. But say you um, want to just get a link. This is where you toggle over get shareable link. And so it'll pop open. You'll want to make sure that you click this little drop down right now. Anyone just only at my company, Tabletop Media Group, with the link can view. So if I copy this link and send it to anybody that's a member of Tabletop, they can view it. If I send this link 
to somebody outside of my organization, they're not going to be able to view it. So that's why it's really important to select this, click more, and then toggle over anyone with the link can view this. And then if you want anyone with the link to be able to edit it, you can simply click down here, can edit, or maybe you just want them to comment on it. And so you'll just hit save and Google will update that link. So you can, you know, create just now a new email and paste that link in there. Or I always like to just do it straight from Google. I type in all the people's names that I want to share and I simply hit send. And so they'll get a notification that a file has been shared with them and then they can easily click on that file and view the document. So that's just how easy it is to share something on Google Drive. So backup and sync desktop option. This is a really cool thing that I wanted you guys to be aware of and something that I use. So you have to um, select, it's an extension, and um, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a, a couple more slides, but there's an extension and it allows you to back up and sync files um, from your desktop with Google Drive, which is really neat. And we'll talk about that. I believe it's... Um, it's the last tip that we'll go over. So it's a really cool function, something that I use at Tabletop too. So now the four interesting functions, we'll first talk about um, making sharing your work publicly simple. So say you want to share your document, presentation, or spreadsheet with the whole world. So that's where you can click on a file and hit uh, publish to the web. So I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's say we wanna go back into that client images folder and we'll go find, um, let's find a photo of some pizza. So what you'll do is you'll click on the file and hit publish to the web and you'll get a public link that you can share with anyone and everyone, which is really neat. So I'm gonna share this. Get a shareable link. And so I click down to the sharing settings and I will click on more and then I'll say on public on the web. And so when I click on this and I hit save, I can now get this link and anyone on the internet can find and view this uh, when they have this link, which is kind of cool. So if I were to put in this link into my browser, now it will pop open that beautiful photo. So it's kind of a fun function, especially if you just want maybe like to share a presentation or something like that. It's easy to publish it to the web and then allow uh, people to find that. So then uh, another bonus is that your document is automatically updated online whenever you make changes to it in Google Drive. So a good example of this would be say, um, on my website, I have a sales sheet that has all of our different services that we offer at Tabletop Media Group. So I can say, click here to view our sales sheet. So say you click on it and then a document pops up that I've shared publicly on the web for my Google Drive. We'll say for instance, compared to last year, we've now added 10 different new services that we can sell a client. So anytime I update it on that Google Doc that I've shared publicly on the web, it will automatically update there. So it just helps to keep you really organized if you're sharing things. It's always sharing the newest, latest, most improved document. So number two, Google allows you to keep track of edits from your inbox. So I personally have this turned off because I think it would drive me a little crazy because my team is always on Google Drive and making comments and suggestions, different things like that but I do have some of uh, the functions turned on. So say for instance, um, I'm gonna open up my Google Drive and we're gonna start a new uh, Google, or actually I'll share you on, a, on an example that I just got from one of my colleagues. So Quinn, one of my colleagues shared me on this press release that she started writing for a client. So say I want uh, to make a comment on this title, I can simply create a comment by going to this little box right here, add a comment, and I can tag Quinn, um, please review title, and then I can hit comment. So instead of her, um, you know, just 
being notified in the document. If she had her email setting turned on, she will get now an email into her inbox that says, Kristen has tagged you any comment on this file. Please click here and she can click here and it will open up the document and she can address that comment. So it's kind of cool because if somebody is making changes into your document, you most likely will want to know. So um, that I think that's really neat that you can keep track of your edits from your inbox. So whenever somebody makes a comment, suggestions, or tags your email address on that file. And so by choosing to get email notifications, you're making sure that you're all up to date and you won't even need um, to open the app because it will come straight into your email. You can click on that file, it'll immediately take you to the file. So that's a, a fun function of Google Drive. Um, and then this is where um, I, I just added a, a quick image of how you can keep track of edits from your inbox. So um, this will start over and I can kind of chat through you um, on this. But basically you'll just click on whatever the um, settings tool is. It looks like that little wheel. Click on notifications and then there's an email tab and you can get all updates about Google Drive items there. So if you want to turn off this setting, you would just go into that setting, notifications, and make sure that's unchecked or check it if you do want to get notifications. So that's how you easily uh, can get those notifications. Number three, so this is a really fun function actually. So you can pull out text from images on Google Drive. So maybe instead of sharing um, a PDF, you wanted to share um, like a, a Word document or something. You can actually upload the PDF to your Google Drive folder and ask for Google Drive to convert it over to text. You can also do this from images, which I think is a really interesting function. So Google Drive has an option to open whatever this file is with Google Docs, and it automatically has an optical uh, optical character recognition. And so in just a few seconds, your document, for, like say for instance, an image or a flyer that you've updated will now convert over to a Google Doc. So it will have all the text ready for you to use. So I'm gonna show you just a quick example of what I'm talking about. So I uploaded a file, I believe, um, let's see if I can find it, here we go. So I uploaded this flyer. This is just an example flyer, and I want to um, convert this over to, um, to a Google Doc. So what I do is I um, click on Google Drive's option to open it with a Google Doc, and it usually takes just a couple minutes to do this. Um, let's see here. Hang on just one second. Let me open up the other example. So what happens, I'm trying to, to find it on here really quick. But basically what happens is when you click on um, open with Google Doc, it will create a Google Doc now with your image and it will automatically pull out all of this text. And I'm not able to find my um, file. So right here, um, you'll click open this arrow and then connect with more apps and you can connect it with your Google Doc. Mine on my computer is already integrated, but you can uh, connect an app that you wish uh, to use. And then as soon as it's connected, it will open it up as a Google Doc. So um, this computer, it's not my home computer, so I'm getting used to using it, but usually um, if you have it integrated that connect with more apps, you can open this now with a Google Doc, and then it will integrate and pull out all your text. So if you have trouble with that, send me an email. Um, it's not working right now on this one because we don't have that connected. So. Um, just a kind of fun tip and trick that I like to share with people if you're looking to pull the text out of an image. And then say I wanted to now share this text with my graphic designer because I wanted her to recreate this file. I can simply just hit share and then I can type Amanda's name or graphic designer and I can hit send. So it's a little bit more advanced. Sorry, I'm kind of going down a little bit of a rabbit hole there, but I wanted you guys to um, at least be able to see that.
Okay. And then the fourth one, this is where I was talking about, um, there's an interesting extension that you can download. So you can convert Microsoft documents to Google for easy access. So there's an office editing for doc sheets and slides Chrome extension. So I know that we had a question, um, does Google Drive integrate well with Google Chrome? Absolutely. I would say definitely get Chrome because they do offer further extensions that work well with Google Drive. So it's a lifesaver when somebody sends you a Word doc or an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to pop open to my Gmail and let's say um, somebody had sent me a Google Doc. So here we go. Um, somebody, this is a Google Doc. So when I click open this Google Doc, or I'm sorry, this is a regular Word Doc. Say I want to be able to edit this now in Google Docs. So I open up my attachment and I can use this button, open with Google Docs. And so now Google is so smart and it will completely transition this over to a Google Doc that is now editable for me. So something kind of cool that I think is a, a fun function of this file storage device. So with a few clicks, Google Drive converts the file to Google's format, so you don't have to buy yet another program for your computer. So that means you don't have to have Microsoft Word on your computer. You can simply convert this document over to that Google Doc. And I know um, we had a question really quick. Let me see in the chat button. Um, Brianna said, um, do we get a recording of this? And actually you do get a recording of this and the slides. So you will be able to refer back to all of these. And then um, she's asking, is there online support from Google on how to use their system? There definitely is. Google is uh, one of the most responsive people out there, I would say. And so they do a lot of online trainings. There, there's like a series of videos you can watch and I'm more than happy to um, share that with Sherry whenever she goes to share the slides. So um, it's definitely one of those systems that um, I would say practice on and just get the hang of, but it's pretty intuitive. There are some more like higher level things that you can do with Google. And um, those I would say come a little bit later after, after you've been practicing and uh, just learning how to use the system in general. So Google Drive for the pricing, um, the individual one is totally free and you get 15 gigabytes of storage for free and it's shared with your other Google services. So keep in mind, if you're emailing a lot of large attachments, whatever is on your Gmail also is part of that um, amount of storage space. And then also business, um, is in a second tier and it's $6 a user per month. And it gives you the, um, the full G Suite account with 30 gigabytes of storage. So you have to have a G Suite account in order to get this rate. And then enterprise is $8 a user per month. And this gives you unlimited storage. And again, you have to have um, your business on Google Drive Enterprise to get this rate. And let me see, we have another uh, quick question that came in. How do you add the word conversion to your Google Drive? Is it an add-on? So yes, that is an add-on. I'm gonna um, just pop back really quick. Um, let's see here. So there is a link that I have added in here and um, it's called Office Editing for Doc Sheets and Slides Chrome Extension. So if you click on that link that's in my presentation, just make sure that you've added this to Chrome. So, uh, Google has all these different extension packs that you can get. You have to be using Chrome as your web browser. And so you'll just click add to Chrome. And so now this will allow you to do office editing for doc sheets and slides. So definitely make sure you download that, but that's a great question. And you will get these slides at the end. So um, Amy, I would certainly refer back to that slide so you can easily access that and download it to your computer. All right, so next up we're going to talk about Dropbox. So this is another really popular one and Dropbox is a place where all your team's content comes together. So you can create, edit your work, including cloud content and Microsoft Office files directly in Dropbox. So you spend a lot less time switching between apps and searching for files when you have Dropbox. So you can store and access files from anywhere. You can store your files in one safe place. You can access them on your phone, your tablet, on your computer, and then any changes you make, say you uploaded a file from your phone to your Dropbox account, 
it will now sync across all the other um, platforms where you're using Dropbox. So say I upload an image of myself and my dog to my Dropbox account on my phone. Now, when I open up Dropbox on my computer, I will see that image. So it's pretty cool. It's similar to all the other um, file storage and sharing devices in that sense. So how do you share a file on Dropbox? So we are going to open up Dropbox as well. I have this um, pulled open, but you'll click on your file and you'll click on the share button. So I'm in my Dropbox account. This is what the home account will look like when you have files and whatnot. And so I'm going to click on a file that I want to share. So let's say I want to go down um, to, let's see, I'm gonna find something fun for you guys that we can share. So here we go. Here's a, an image of some, um, some ice cream. So it's Andia's homemade ice cream. They used to be one of our clients that we do some social media with. So what you would do is you click on this file and then there's a blue button that says share. So you'll click on share and then I can choose who I want to share this with. So say I want to share it with um, Skipper Jones, for instance, she just popped up when I typed S. So I can click over here that she can view this file and then I can add my message to her. Hey, check out this image. And then I can um, share this. And so she would simply just get a link and then she'd be able to view this file. So that's just how easy it is. Pretty similar to all the other um, devices that we've, or all the other tools that we've looked at. So you will type in their name or email of someone you wish to share the file with, and then you can add your message and simply click share. You can also create a link, um, which is great too. So say you want to share this, um, create a link is down at the bottom. So it's blue, it says create a link, and Dropbox will automatically generate a link for you. You simply just copy the link, and then say I wanna share it with somebody in email. I'm gonna share it with Lewis from my team, Andia's ice cream photo, and then I simply just hit paste. And now that link will appear, and then whenever she clicks on that link, this image will now pop up. So it's pretty simple about how to share things on Dropbox. So then Dropbox has some new ways to share files. So it also like Box, I know it gets a little bit confusing. There are two big competitors, Box and Dropbox, but also like Box, you can send your files to things that it integrates with. So like Slack, or maybe you want to present a document in Zoom, for instance, you can actually um, integrate your Dropbox with Zoom, which is a really recent update that Dropbox um, just uh, launched. And so it integrates with Gmail, Hello Sign, which is kind of like that DocuSign or like an electronic signature, integrates with Trello, which if you were at the class um, on Tuesday, we talked about Trello, it's a project management system, also integrates with FreshBooks, WhatsApp, Microsoft Teams. So there's lots of different ways that you can now share files, which I think is really cool. Um, Dropbox is really keeping up with the times and enabling you to share documents. So Dropbox also just launched something new. I like to compare it to like Box, um, their notes section that we went over, and also Google Docs. So Dropbox just launched Dropbox Paper. So paper is more than a document. It's a workspace is what they like to call it that brings creation and coordination together in one place. So you can write, edit, brainstorm, review designs, manage tasks, or even run meetings from Dropbox paper. So you access by going to your file section on Dropbox, and then you create a new file and select Dropbox paper. So I'm going to open up my Dropbox. So we're going to go back to Dropbox. I click on files. And then I hit create a new file, create a new file, and then it's gonna toggle down and it'll say Dropbox paper. So say I want to create my first Dropbox paper, I'll click open on this. And you can also just go to this helpful link I put in here, dropbox.com uh, forward slash paper to access. So now I have a new paper and I want to name it something. So I'm gonna just do example one. And then I can say first, um, Dropbox paper example. And so it's a really cool tool. It's 
very, very similar to the box notes. Um, it almost like even looks the same with the same type of text. So I can now share this with somebody I want to collaborate with. So maybe I want to share it with Quinn. I can have her edit the document. I can hit share and now she can easily edit in uh, the Dropbox uh, paper. And so you can have uh, great formatting. You can select text in your doc to see different types of options of formatting. I can add comments in here. I can add links to live videos and all sorts of different things. So it's a great tool and also very collaborative. And um, say I want to get like the word count or you know document history. If I click these three dots, it'll expand it and it will allow me to look at my document's history, the word count of it. it says I have four words, 27 characters, and then I can also print it from here. So it's kind of like you know a word document that we're used to editing, but it's more collaborative. So a fun tool that Dropbox just launched, and it will automatically save this now into your Dropbox when you're done. So if you ever need to go back and access it, um, you can simply just go down to your files and find it on Dropbox. So um, similar to Box, I would say they're pretty comparable. Um, just I would say play around with them and see which one uh, flows a little bit better for you. And then I did want to go over the pricing before we end the presentation. So Dropbox pricing, the basic one is totally free. It gives you two gigabytes of free space. And then the plus version is $9.99 a month and it gives you two terabytes of storage space. So that's quite a big jump. I will say it's really great for, you know, if you have a lot of documents, a lot of images and photos. And then the professional account is $16.58 a month, and it gives you three terabytes of storage space. So uh, pretty comparable to some of the other file sharing tools out there. And I, I really do like Dropbox. We use it, um, you know, every now and then, but I would say for us, of course, Google Drive is, is more um, where it's at for us. So I will take this time. I know uh, we're running a little bit um, not, not too behind, but we have a couple of questions. So um, let's see, Melissa says, do you get confused when you use so many different forms of file storage? What's your method to know what is where? So that's a fantastic question, Melissa. So at Tabletop, I know for us, we like to use Google Drive, but we also do have an account on Box and on Dropbox. So what I typically do is I, when I have like an initial client meeting, I ask them what their usual file storage um, and sharing device is. So many of them do use Google Drive, so that's what we'll use to collaborate. But then some of my clients, like for instance, uh, we have a client, Cheshire Pork, they love Dropbox. So she has now shared the tabletop Dropbox on all of her Cheshire Pork photos and different things like that. And so I just kind of, I mean, it does get a little bit confusing, but I just kind of know what clients uh, prefer what. And then whenever I know I'm working on a Cheshire Pork project, I'll open up my Dropbox and then I'll be able, be able to access all of her photos from there. So, you know, I can click on whatever photo she shared me with. So this cut of pork or whatever, um, if I need to access that. So it does get a little bit confusing. I would say make sure um, for your organization to just stick with one and um, try them all out first. Like I said, stick with, um, with whatever one works really well for you and then start, you know, really getting it organized. And biggest tip is organize early on. So I know that was one of the things I had documents everywhere. They were not organized in folders when I first started. So I went through, I just spent, you know, a couple hours, I organized them all by client. And then I was able to, you know, drag and drop uh, files to those folders. So it really helps if you start that early on. Definitely, definitely. Um, and then Melissa said we had that problem, uh, too many images across too many platforms, for sure. I would say definitely um, just stick with one and, uh, and just try to have everybody on your company get used to one together and just use that one. So Sterling said, do slash can recipients of Google shares see the other shared recipients? So that's a good question. Um, I had somebody just the other day on my team. So basically Sterling is saying like, say Kristen, myself, I share somebody and I say, hey everybody, check out um, this Google doc, I want your feedback on it. 
So whenever I share that, um, it will come to them as an email and it will come to them personally on an email. So like if somebody, I'm going to chat with um, Quinn from my team to show you guys an example of that. So I'm going to ask uh, Quinn for an example. Can you share me and Jordan on a Google Doc real quick? So I'm going to have her share us on a Google Doc and then you'll be able to see what it looks like when somebody shares you on a document. So uh, that will be coming up in just a moment. Um, whenever she sees my chat. So um, let me look at some of the other questions that we have. Um, is Apple Cloud a file sharing, sorry, a file sharing tool also? So I am not super familiar with Apple Cloud just because I'm not an Apple user. So that's something that I will, um, that I will have to look into for you and get back with you. Um, I, I'm an Android user, so I haven't used Apple in quite a while, but um, I do know that like a lot of people use the iCloud and um, they'll use that to store their images, different things like that. I do know that you can organize things um, through iCloud. So I'm not sure about sharing though. I, I would have to get back to you on that. But another one too um, that a lot of folks use is called OneDrive and I'll just um, pop it open so you can see what the, um, what it looks like. So it's called OneDrive. It's by Microsoft. This is the logo right here. It looks like a little cloud and it's a file hosting service and um, syncing service operated by Microsoft as part of its web version of Office. So I have a Lenovo computer for instance and um, it automatically comes with a OneDrive. So it's essentially kind of like I would imagine like an iCloud where it stores all of my documents on the cloud for me and I can you know send and uh, receive files that way. And it automatically backs things up. All right, so Quinn is going to share us on a Google Doc so uh, we can see what it looks like when somebody shares us on a doc. So that'll be coming up in just a second. Um, and then let's see, what else? Can pages, keynote, and numbers also be shared with tools discussed today? So that's a really great question. Like I know um, Microsoft Pages is similar to like a Google Doc. Um, so, or I'm sorry, not Microsoft, Apple um, has Pages. So it's say um, you are using your uh, MacBook Pro and you're saving a document and it's the extension is .pages you can easily share something like that with some of these tools. So what you would do is go into like your Dropbox account, for instance, and you would go to um, create a new file and then you will upload your files and then you'll just pick wherever it is on your computer. Um, this is not a Mac, so I can't show you, but um, if it was like a dot .pages doc, you would simply select it and then hit open. So I'm just gonna use this as an example and then it will upload it to uh, whatever folder you wish um, to upload it to. So yes, you should be able to still use all of that. Um, and then we have a question, does Dropbox work with Apple phones? I believe it does. It should be able to work um, with, with most of the um, different devices out there. Okay. All right. So let's pop back over. So Quinn is sharing us um, on a, a press release. So it will show you. Um, so that was a, a great question, Sterling. So when somebody is sharing you on a document, it will show you who all they sent it to. So I can see it was sent to me and also Jordan. So I will be able to see that the two of us were shared on it. And then once I open it, um, and maybe I want to share it with somebody so I can click share and then I can now also click right here shared with and it will show me who all has access to this document so if you're trying to be private you know um, I, I don't think this would be the right tool to use so if you um, don't want somebody to know that it's been shared with somebody else I would recommend maybe making two different copies of that file so now I'll know that um, myself, Quinn, Susan, Chris, Jordan, and Townsend are all people who can access this document. So that was a great question. All right. So Amy said um, she really loves Google Docs and uh, like the whole Google Drive system. 
What are some of your favorite extensions? Oh my goodness. I could definitely go on and on about that. Um, I would say this by far, uh, the one that I talked about today is my favorite extension because I get, um, like every single day from a client, they'll send me like a word document or a word, um, like one of the Excel spreadsheets. And so for me, I, on my personal computer and on my work computer, I do not have the ability to use Microsoft Word. So what I do is what I showed you guys, I will go in and I'll find that Word document. So um, I was just sent one for Mango Salsa. I'll find that Word document open with Google Docs. And so for me, that has been such a lifesaver for my business and just me personally, whenever people send stuff that's like a Microsoft file, I can easily convert it over to now a Word doc or um, a Google doc that I'm able to edit. So I'd say that's my favorite one, but thank you for asking. And Melissa, um, she is an Apple user and she said sharing and workflow is not as user friendly when using just Apple storage. So that's um, a good tip um, from Melissa. Thank you for sharing. And then Melissa is asking, what was the extension called? So it's called Office Editing for Docs, Sheets, and Slides. And you can easily go, I'm going to um, pop this in the chat where you can look at all the extensions. So this is in the chat if you want to go refer to that. And it has all the different extensions that Google Chrome has. And so this will integrate with your uh, Google account. Um, like Zoom is something that can integrate. Um, there's all sorts of different things out there. Google Translate, which is another great ex extension, especially if you're working with people internationally and maybe you're getting documents sent in other languages. That's a really great extension. Um, but yeah, that, that's something to definitely take a look at. Well, cool guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you learned a little bit more about what some of those tools are out there that you can use. Um, just as a reminder, they were Box, ShareFile, Google Drive, and Dropbox. There are a bunch of other ones out there too. I just tried to pick, um, according to statistics, what some of the most recognizable ones are out there. And um, like I mentioned, I know I'm preaching the Google route, um, but definitely find what works best for you. And like we said, stick to one and just play around with that, get organized and see what works best for you and your company. And definitely uh, feel free to look at these slides to refer back to pricing and just different tips and tricks. But I will leave my contact information up here and it has our website, our email, and then also our social media handles. And so feel free to reach out to me there. I know I had a couple of you guys email me privately that um, you needed some help on something that we talked about. Um, and feel free to just reach out and I am more than happy to help. So thank you guys very, very much. And like we mentioned in the beginning of class, we will have these slides and also uh, the recording of this presentation available to you. So you are more than welcome to refer back to it um, if you know you were having trouble with something or just needed a little refresher. So hope that um, helped everybody. Thank you so much. And I'll go ahead and um, I'm going to pop in also my personal email address into the chat. So if you guys need to email me, it is right in there. It's Kristen at tabletopmediagroup.com. So feel free to send me a note right there.